X-ray of the chest. The first step in reading an X-ray film is to hold it correctly, upright and with the letter R on your left side, as if the patient is standing facing you. Then confirm that it is well centralized and well exposed. In a well centralized film, the medial ends of both clavicles are equidistant from the spine. If they are not, then you cannot make any comment on the mediastinal shift, cardiomegaly or on comparative radiolucency of the lung fields. In a well exposed film, the spinous processes of only the first four thoracic vertebrae are seen. Others are hidden by the heart shadow. If the film is overexposed, more vertebrae are seen and the lungs appear more translucent. Now first study the lung fields in the three zones, upper, middle and lower. Upper zone is the area above the anterior end of the second rib. Lower zone is the area below the anterior end of the fourth rib. And middle zone is between the anterior ends of the second and fourth ribs. Compare the lung fields on the right and left side in the upper, middle and lower zones. The lung fields should be equally radiolucent on both sides at equivalent levels. Now study the apices very carefully, especially the area just behind the clavicles where the earliest tuberculous lesions are found. If there is a bony asymmetry, look for a cervical rib. Then inspect the cardiophrenic and costophrenic angles. They should be sharply defined. Any obliteration of any of these angles is pathological. The right diaphragm should be 0.5 to 1.5 cm higher than the left diaphragm and both should be smoothly curved. Then study the hyla represented by the shadows of the hilar vessels. The left hilum is normally at a slightly higher level than the right. Lastly, identify the course of the trachea up to the carina for any deviation. This completes the inspection of the lung fields. Now inspect the cardiac silhouette. First study the cardiac border and measure the cardiothoracic ratio for cardiac enlargement. The left cardiac border is made of aorta, pulmonary conus, left atrial appendage and the left ventricle. The right cardiac border is composed of superior vena cava and the right atrium. We will study the details later. To measure the cardiothoracic ratio, draw a vertical line through the center of the spine. Draw lines A and B perpendicular from this line to the maximum widths of the right and left heart borders. A plus B gives the maximum transverse diameter of the heart. It should be less than half of the maximum transverse diameter of the chest, that is C, that is the transverse line joining the inner borders of the ribs at the widest portion of the chest. We will study the details of the heart shadow in a later section. After studying the lung fields and the heart, inspect the bones, first the ribs for crowding, spreading and bony lesions then the clavicles, scapula and shoulder joints. Lastly, study the soft tissues, the muscles, the subcutaneous tissues of the chest and the neck and in females, the breasts. After studying all these minute details, it is very important to stand at a distance and look at the film as a whole because many times a close and minute inspection may miss a gross change and then hold the film at an angle and view it slightly tangentially. Minor changes in radiolucency of the lungs are better appreciated this way. This completes the study of an x-ray of the chest. Over the years with experience you become so familiar with the normal structures that a change will be recognized at a glance. But a good practitioner will never call an x-ray as normal at a glance. Even the most experienced radiologist will study the film systematically and minutely before giving his opinion. We will study the x-ray lesions of tuberculosis under three headings. The parenchymal lesions, the pleural lesions and the primary complex. The characteristic lesion of early tuberculosis is infiltration. It is a soft fluffy opacity like spread out cotton with tiny opacities merging into each other interspersed with streak like shadows. 
Tuberculosis most commonly starts in the apical and posterior segments of the upper lobe. So the early lesions are often seen behind the outer part of the clavicle. This is a typical early lesion of pulmonary tuberculosis. Note the fluffy nodular opacity behind the right clavicle. This is another early lesion in the right upper zone, appreciated better if you compare it with the apex of the opposite side. In a close-up view, note the cotton-like fluffy opacity. This x-ray shows an infiltration of the left upper zone in an early case of tuberculosis. The close-up shows tiny white opacities merging into each other scattered in the left upper zone. This x-ray shows bilateral early infiltration. Note the shadow of the infiltration in right upper zone and the left middle zone. The second characteristic lesion in tuberculosis is a cavity seen as a circular radiolucent area usually in the apical zone. This is a typical tuberculous cavity. It is thick walled, circular, radiolucent area and is situated in the upper zone. The wall is smooth and there is no fluid in it. Note the surrounding infiltration which is almost always seen around a tuberculous cavity. So this is a typical cavity in tuberculosis. In this x-ray, there is a cavity in the left, mid and upper zone. It is a very thin walled cavity and is seen only on close inspection as a radiolucent area without lung markings. This x-ray shows a large cavity in the right upper zone. Note the smooth and thick wall indicating that it is chronic and the surrounding infiltration in the upper lobe. This is a typical tuberculous cavity. This x-ray shows a thick walled cavity in the right mid zone. But note that the wall is smooth and of even thickness and there is no fluid level. This x-ray shows a cavity in the left upper zone in a collapsed and fibrosed left lung. The mediastinum is pulled to the left side and the cavity is seen clearly within the fibrosed lung. Sometimes a typical tuberculous cavity shows a rounded opacity within it. Note this opacity in the left upper zone cavity. It is rounded and lying freely mobile within the cavity. This is a fungal ball. It is caused by superadded fungal infection, usually aspergillosis. Note the fungal ball within the tuberculous cavity. Sometimes cavities can occur in atypical locations. This is a cavity in the lower zone. Note the thick but smooth wall, absence of fluid level and surrounding infiltration. This is a large and irregular cavity in the left lower zone. In a close-up view, note the thick and irregular wall. Lower zone cavities and atypical cavities are seen in patients with diabetes and HIV infections. The next typical change in healing tuberculosis is fibrosis. Fibrosis appears as opaque linear streaks radiating towards the hilum of the lung. The shadow of fibrosis as compared to infiltration is more dense and sharply delineated and the neighboring structures like trachea or diaphragm are pulled towards it. Note a typical shadow of fibrosis in the left upper lobe. Note that it is denser than infiltration with opaque streaks radiating towards the hilum. The trachea is only minimally pulled towards the lesion. This x-ray shows fibrosis in the right upper lobe. Now we will see the shadow of the trachea and see how it is pulled towards the lesion. Fibrosis in the lung tissue causes a contraction and reduction in the size of the affected lobe and pulls the neighboring structures towards it. Here we see that the upper mediastinum is pulled. This is another case of fibrosis in the left upper lobe. Note the tracheal deviation towards the fibrosis. In close-up view, note how the trachea is curved. If for some reason trachea and the mediastinum are fixed, then the diaphragm will be pulled up by fibrosis. In this x-ray, there is left upper zone fibrosis. The trachea is central, but note that the left diaphragm is pulled up. 
normally left diaphragm should be at a lower level than the right so either the mediastinum or the diaphragm or both may get pulled towards the fibrotic lung this x-ray shows very dense fibrosis in the right upper lobe and it has pulled all the structures towards it the trachea is pulled to the right and the transverse fissure and the diaphragm are pulled up in this x-ray with extensive fibrosis on the right side inspect the other lung that's the left lung it is hyper translucent bigger with low diaphragms the lung markings are diminished this is a compensatory emphysema on the opposite side to compensate for the fibrosed lung when fibrosis occurs close to the diaphragm the diaphragm may become tented if the diaphragm is pulled up at one point it gets raised with a sharp angle this is termed as tenting of the diaphragm not the typical angulated tent like appearance in our country very often the tuberculous lesion is more advanced more extensive and is seen as a combination of fibrosis infiltration and cavitation termed as fibro cavitatory lesion note the thick walled cavity and fibrosis in the right lower zone a large thin walled cavity in the mid zone and another small thick walled cavity in the upper zone with extensive fibrosis this is another x-ray showing bilateral fibro cavitatory lesions note the dense shadow of fibrosis on the right side combined with cavitation in the left upper lobe this is an x-ray of fibro cavitatory lesion on the right side with compensatory emphysema on the left note the multiple cavities and fibrosis in the right upper zone with trachea pulled towards the lesion due to fibrosis while the opposite lung is hyper translucent due to compensatory emphysema this x-ray shows a fibro cavitatory lesion in the mid zones note the dense streak like shadows of fibrosis with cavities in between in this x-ray we see advanced fibro cavitatory lesions on both the sides note the very dense and sharply defined shadows of fibrosis on both sides and on the left side amidst the fibrosis the arrow points to one of the small thick walled cavities another type of picture in tuberculosis is miliary tuberculosis which occurs when there is an overwhelming infection note the fine pinpoint soft opacities which are spread uniformly throughout both the lung fields each opacity is about 2 mm in size also note that the opacities do not coalesce they are individually separate and discrete and are fairly equal in size this is miliary tuberculosis this is another x-ray of miliary tuberculosis note the fine pinpoint mottling spread uniformly in both the lungs once again note that the opacities are fairly uniform in size and they are separate from each other for comparison this is non miliary mottling note that the opacities are larger in size varying in size and their distribution is not uniform they tend to coalesce to form larger opacities now compare the two the fine uniform mottling of miliary tuberculosis in the inset and the irregularly distributed opacities of varying size in other conditions healing in tuberculosis occurs by fibrosis and calcification so healed lesions leave their marks in the form of fibrosis or calcified spots this x-ray shows calcifications in both lungs note the density of these lesions they are denser than the bones these are calcifications in old tuberculous lesions this x-ray shows calcified lesions in the left upper zone and right hilum indicating old healed tuberculosis note that the density is more than the bone density 
Calcifications near the hilum are usually calcified hilar lymph nodes and peripheral calcifications are due to calcified foci of caseation. This x-ray shows extensive fibrosis in the right lung with shift of trachea to the right and the left lung with compensatory emphysema shows dense specks of calcification. This is another healed lesion showing calcific spots in both lung fields. Note the dense white spots indicating calcified areas of caseation. Now inspect this lesion carefully. The left upper zone shows infiltration as well as some calcified spots. Let us see in close up. The dense calcified opacities indicate old healed lesions of the past. But the cotton like fluffy infiltration indicates a fresh lesion. Probably reactivation of old lesion or reinfection. Now we will see some advanced lesions. This x-ray shows extensive bilateral lesions. The right lung showing extensive infiltration and fibrosis and a small cavity in the mid zone. This x-ray shows infiltration on the right side in the right upper and mid zones with a cavity in the upper zone. The left mid zone shows early infiltration. This x-ray of the same patient at a later date shows denser opacities of fibrocaceous lesions in the right upper and mid zone and note the cavity in the midst of the fibrosed lesion. This x-ray shows an extensive infiltration of the left upper and mid zones with small cavities and a few patchy infiltrations in the right mid zone. This x-ray shows extensive fibrosis in both the lungs with compensatory emphysema in the lower zones. Now before we move to the pleural lesions, let us see some tuberculous lesions and the effect of treatment on them. This is the first x-ray before starting chemotherapy showing extensive lesions involving both the lungs. Note the fluffy appearance of infiltration. This is the second x-ray after 5 months. Now the lesions are more sharply defined and fibrotic and infiltration shadows have reduced. And the last x-ray after one year of chemotherapy shows complete healing with minimal residual fibrosis. Now let us see in close up the right mid zone of the same x-ray. Note the infiltration in the first x-ray. Then note the fibrosis and resolving infiltration in the second x-ray after 5 months. And the fine fibrotic streaks in the final x-ray. This is another patient showing a dense infiltration in the right upper zone. The second x-ray after one year of chemotherapy shows complete healing with only a few fibrotic streaks in the upper zone. Let us view it in a close up view. Note the dense infiltration involving the right apex. The second x-ray shows just a few thin fibrous streaks and slight shift of trachea towards the lesion indicating fibrosis. Note this x-ray showing infiltration in the right mid zone and the left upper zone on detection. After completion of treatment, the right mid zone shows residual fibrosis while the left upper zone has healed without trace. Now we will come to the pleural lesions.